Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Harihar Fort. The historical Harihar Fort is a very old fortification which can be found in Maharashtra, India. It was built many centuries ago by the Suna dynasty, who reigned between 1187 and 1317. The location was perfect to watch over the busy trade road moving through the Gonagat region. The Harihar was taken over by Briggs, a British commander, in 1818. The British plan involved using artillery to destroy the fort's access roads and defenses. As a result, the British demolished numerous forts, stairways, pathways, and trails. But Officer Briggs recognized the importance and beauty of the rock-cut steps and left them intact. What makes this fortress so impressive is that it was built on top of a huge hill. It can only be accessed by going up a steep ladder from the base, practically vertical. It is a two-hour climb with great difficulty. Basically, you have to scramble up a stone ladder whose steps are so worn, it's like trying to climb up a slide. Inside this ancient fort, there is an incredible view of the entire area. It's pretty easy to see why the site was chosen for a military fortress. There isn't much left of the actual fortress. It looks like the stone has been quickly melting over the past almost 1,000 years. It's nothing but a ruin but once situated in a remarkable place. The Temples of Palenque The Temple of the Inscription at Palenque is one of the most mysterious structures left behind by the Maya. Palenque is an ancient Maya city located in Chiapas State, Mexico. It is practically bursting with temples, but this one stands out as something of an enigma. It gets its name from the fact that it's carved with over 617 glyphs. The temple was constructed around the year 675, commissioned by Pakal the Great, and then finished by his son, Khan Balam II. The temple itself sits at the very top of a huge step pyramid. The temple looms over 68 feet above the ground below. It's decorated in images of ancient Maya gods, and although its exterior now looks bland and dreary, made of ordinary whitish-brown stone, it was once painted completely red. It was a great bloody temple standing atop an eight-tiered pyramid. The greatest mystery of the temple came in 1952, when the Mexican archaeologist Alberto Luyer discovered a slab on the floor that didn't quite look like the others. It had holes drilled in each corner, which Alberto realized could be used to lift the stone from its place. After he and his crew did that, they found a stairway leading down into the dark depths of the pyramid. It took almost two years for them to clear out the rubble, at which point they came upon the tomb of Pakal the Great. He had been entombed inside the pyramid, with the temple acting as a kind of cover for his grave. They actually found the remains of Pakal the Great himself, his body trapped in a mysterious sarcophagus. On the cover of the sarcophagus was an image that appeared to show Pakal as an astronaut, seated in some kind of space-traveling vehicle. According to historians, the image was merely intended to represent the king journeying through the earth, the sky, and the underworld, while others believe it is evidence that the Maya had come into contact with a space-faring people from beyond the stars. Farm Frozen in Time Archaeologists in Israel have just discovered the remains of an ancient farmstead that was abandoned in a hurry 2,100 years ago. According to the experts, the farmers who lived here deserted their property because of an impending military invasion. Archaeologist Amani Abu Hamid, the leader of the excavation, described the farmstead as a time capsule, frozen as it was when it was initially abandoned. The excavators found storage jars that were still sealed, pieces of a weaving loom, and other personal items that were forgotten as the occupants ran for safety. There were many looms suggesting that weaving was an important task, so the occupants probably kept herds of sheep or goats. While we don't know who exactly lived here, the structure's age indicates they were citizens of the mighty Seleucid Empire. But when the Hasmoneans invaded, a society of early Jewish people based in Jerusalem far to the south, the Seleucids ran away. Whoever lived at this farmstead had likely been enjoying a relatively peaceful existence, weaving fabrics and harvesting crops until an army suddenly appeared on the horizon and they had no choice but to flee into the unknown. Even more interesting is that the excavations have also unearthed traces of a far earlier settlement that came 1,000 years before this farmstead was built. Clearly, this part of Israel, located north of the Sea of Galilee, 
has a rich history of human habitation. It's shout out time! I wanted to say a big thank you to Tyrannel and Angela Muse for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about mysterious places. Woodstock Palace Woodstock Palace was an ancient royal hunting lodge used by British monarchs over a span of about 700 years. Located deep in the English countryside, this place saw a total of 16 British rulers pass through its great halls. Ethelred the Unready used it, Henry VIII spent time here, and it was the birthplace of King Edward III's eldest son, the Black Prince. Woodstock Palace was even used as a prison for Queen Elizabeth I by her half-sister Queen Mary I during the Protestant uprising. She was allowed to leave in April 1555. But after 700 years of use, the lodge was demolished in 1720 to build the even more luxurious Blenheim Palace. Recently, researchers with Wessex archaeology have found the remains of some ancient structures buried on the palace grounds. They discovered the ruins of a series of water mills from the 14th century before beginning a dredging job, which had once been part of the original Woodstock Palace. They came across stone water channels used to direct water from the mill. Even more interesting is that these stone water channels are directly linked to a lake on the property, which had probably been a body of water called the Queen's Pond. This pond was created artificially to help drive the mill wheel. It was named after Queen Philippa, the consort of King Edward II, back in 1330. Timbuktu Timbuktu is an ancient city in Mali, which during the 15th century was the biggest intellectual hub in all of the Islamic world. In fact, Timbuktu in West Africa was a bustling center for culture and learning during what historians call the Golden Age of Islam. It all started after the Mali Empire grew to be a superpower in Africa, and the Malian king, Mansa Musa I, annexed the city of Timbuktu in 1324. He helped to transform what had been a seasonal trading post since 1100 into a hub of learning, culture, and architecture. Islamic leaders and African kings traveled from all over to meet in Timbuktu, where they traded, learned the news of the world, and fostered strong allies with the rulers of other nations. By the 16th century, Timbuktu was a major city of learning, with over 180 schools called maktabs. Not only was this place for spiritual growth, but a place where scientists could come to study astronomy, mathematics, and history. Unfortunately, all of that changed before the 17th century. The Moroccan Saidian dynasty showed up, deposed of the rulers of the city, and destroyed everything. Schools were reduced to ruins, manuscripts were destroyed, and all those magnificent books of knowledge were gone. The city never made a full recovery. As recently as 2012, Al-Qaeda attacked northern Mali and destroyed what little historical relics still remained from the days of Timbuktu. Ancient Pottery Workshop Archaeologists in the ancient Egyptian city of Alexandria found a whole bunch of cool artifacts over a series of recent archaeological missions. One of the most interesting places they found was an old workshop used for the manufacturing of amphoras. These were ancient jars that were used by everyone from the Egyptians to the Romans for transporting things like oil and grain. Pretty much anything that needed to be transported was put into an amphora jar, then shipped across the sea. This workshop was where many of them were built roughly 2,000 years ago. But its history stretches into the Middle Ages. The archaeologists found a lime-making kiln from the Byzantine era, which began about 1,500 years ago. When the pottery workshop had been converted to a cemetery, they also discovered two burial sites from the Middle Ages. It's shocking because it goes to show just how things change over many centuries. Archaeologists even found a small collection of ancient coins dating back to various eras. One of the coins had the face of Alexander the Great stamped on it, another the face of Zeus, and another of Queen Cleopatra. The discovery indicates that the workers at this site were receiving good treatment and living a decent life. Suakin Island Ruins The Suakin Island Ruins are the broken remains of an abandoned coral city. For 3,000 years, this port city, located on the edge of the Red Sea in northern Sudan, was a strategically crucial point. It was initially built by the great Egyptian pharaoh Ramses III in the 10th century BC. Back then, it was used strictly for trade and exploration. 1,000 years later, 
followers of Islam took the port over, and it became necessary for the Africans moving to Mecca for their pilgrimage. But no matter how the city evolved through the years, it remained prosperous and hugely important to whoever controlled it. There is even an old legend of a king who ruled the city, had 360 wives, and a great palace full of treasure. The fascinating part of Suakin was that its buildings were made from coral. But everything went wrong in the 19th century when it became a hub for the slave trade in eastern Africa. After a rather dark period of history, once the slave trade had diminished, the port became unnecessary and was abandoned in the 1920s. From ancient Egypt until only a century ago, this place flourished. Now all that's left are the broken remains of the Great Coral Walls. Mysterious Japanese Tomb Archaeologists made a recent breakthrough involving an ancient Japanese tomb thanks to satellite images. A research group carried out a study that had never been done before by looking at ancient Japanese tombs called Kofun from the sky. The issue with these tombs is that they are a forbidden place. Not even local Japanese archaeologists are allowed to breach the walls of the magnificent tombs because they are considered sacred. So researchers have little options when it comes to learning more about them. What most people don't know is that the Japanese islands are dotted with hundreds of these ancient burial mounds. The biggest were made in the shape of a keyhole, which has always been a huge mystery for archaeologists. We know they were built between the 3rd and 7th centuries, and that the biggest is located near Osaka. It supposedly holds the remains of the legendary first emperor of Japan, Emperor Jimu, who died in 585 BC. Jimu was said to be a direct descendant of the sun goddess Amaterasu, making him a god-king. While nobody knows if Emperor Jimu truly did exist, the researchers have found out one thing about these tombs. Using the satellite images, they discovered that all the tombs are oriented to face the exact same way. Each of these tombs faces the rising sun, and that seems pretty fitting considering Japan's nickname is the Land of the Rising Sun. Treasure in the Valley of the Kings A truly shocking tomb has just been discovered in Egypt, very close to the famous Valley of the Kings. It was uncovered in the necropolis of Dra el Naga and contained four new mummies. Even more awesome is the fact that the archaeologists have already identified the owner of the tomb. Its main occupant was a man named Amenemhat, a goldsmith who lived during the 18th dynasty. This was between 1550 and 1292 BC, years that were ruled over by famous kings and queens like Tutankhamun, Nefertiti, and Hatshepsut. According to Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, the goldsmith was undoubtedly a nobleman of some significance. Human remains, funerary objects, jewelry, and other items were discovered within his tomb, with over 150 Shabti statues. These statues are fascinating because they were intended to come alive in the afterlife and be used as servants for the deceased. They were like ghostly robots that went into the underworld with the dead person so that they wouldn't have to do any heavy lifting for the rest of eternity. Archaeologists also believe there could be even more tombs buried underneath these ones. And here's something shocking you might not know. Zahi Hawass says that modern Egypt was built on top of ancient Egypt and that most of the old world is still buried underneath modern concrete. He said that up to this point, researchers have only discovered about 30% of the Egyptian monuments. He believes 70% of the ancient world is still buried. Ebla Ebla was an ancient city that saw its peak once in the 3rd millennium BC and again around 1800 BC. These days, this mysterious ruined place is most famous for the shockingly well-preserved archive of cuneiform tablets discovered in the rubble. Archaeologists actually found 17,000 of these tablets from the days of the Sumerians, dating back to around 2250 BC. These tablets contain unprecedented knowledge of the ancient world. They detail things like governmental functions, the mixture of religious beliefs from Sumerian gods to Semitic deities, and the inner workings of the ancient economy. These tablets were written at a time when the city was a huge economic center governed by kings who came into power through democratic elections. There was no dynastic succession, but rather citizens who voted their kings onto the throne. Sadly, one of the earliest civilizations that practiced democracy was destroyed in 2200 BC by the Akkadian Empire. It was rebuilt 400 years later by the Amorites and then destroyed for a second time by the Hittites. After that, 
Ebla was a small village in a dusty wasteland until it completely vanished in 700 AD. It remained hidden from the world until archaeologists dug it up in 1964. The Monsters of Hollow Earth For thousands of years, people have believed in an underground world hiding beneath the surface of our own world. The ancient Greeks believed there was a dark land filled with the souls of the dead. In the 17th century, the leading scientific minds believed there was a mirror world underneath the surface, a world within the hollow of the earth, filled with its own atmosphere, its own creatures, and its own exotic landscapes. They called it the hollow earth theory, and many of the most intelligent people on the planet supported it. These days, science tells us a dramatically different story. We know the earth is made up of crusts, liquid magma, and a hot core of shifting iron and nickel. There is nowhere for an entire world of beasts and lands to exist. It's just not feasible. But in 1692, when the hollow earth theory was proposed, it was revolutionary. The first person to officially speculate about a world within the hollow marble we live on was Edmund Halley, the man who Halley's Comet is named after. Edmund suggested that the planet is nothing but a series of spherical shells, all spinning in different directions. He believed the space between each shell was large enough to have its own atmosphere, which could support life. During the years that followed, more scientists speculated on what these hollow Earths might look like. The theory grew and changed until instead of many shells, the Earth was entirely hollow, with one huge cavern underneath miles of rock. Some even believed there to be a small sun hanging in the center of the Earth. This miniature sun supposedly created an environment within the planet even more beautiful than the environment on the outside. The hollow Earth theory went on for a shocking amount of time, only losing traction in the 20th century when most people agreed it was nonsense. Ancient Subterranean War Tunnels in 1948, the small village of Yangqing in China's Hebei province experienced a massive flood. Villagers were running for their lives when suddenly the water was diverted and began to drain away, sparing the people. It was later discovered that the flood water had been diverted by a mysterious underground passage that nobody knew was even there. Moving forward to 1951, a house in the same town abruptly imploded. It caved in on itself to expose a subterranean cavern. Within the cavern, villagers found dozens of doors leading to dark and creepy passageways. This was a major archaeological discovery. It soon became clear that underneath the village of Yangqing was a series of ancient war passages used centuries ago. These tunnels and caverns were used to shelter troops during times of war. There were military facilities, camouflaged exits, locking gates, and heated brick beds. But most impressive were the miles and miles of tunnels. They had been designed in such a way that an army could flank an invading enemy and attack unsuspectedly from the rear. It's doubtful the full extent of these war passages have been uncovered, even today. They had likely been used by the Song Dynasty from between 960 and 1127 AD to defend their territory. They were constantly at war with the minority races to the north, the Khitan and the Jerkins. These secret passages were used like a wall, only underground. Enemies had no hope of moving beyond the underground wall, as the soldiers hiding down in the tunnels would spring up like rats and obliterate any invading force. The Carnivorous Plant In the dark and humid jungles of Borneo, Indonesia, a mysterious plant has just been discovered. An international team of scientists identified a new species of pitcher plant called Nepenthes pudica. For those unfamiliar with the pitcher plant, it's a rare carnivorous plant shaped like a water pitcher. It's such an enticing plant that insects can't help but crawl into its mouth, at which point they slip in and get stuck. Then they get dissolved in the plant's digestive juices. The newly discovered pitcher plant is a little different than the others in that it utilizes a unique method for feeding. According to Martin Dankak from the Department of Ecology and the Environment at Palaki University, the pitcher plant behaves differently from any other known species. It places its traps underground instead of above the surface. 
hiding its traps in cavities underneath the soil. Instead of waiting for creatures to crawl into its mouth, it grows traps under the ground to snag tiny invertebrates like ants, mites, beetles, and other subterranean critters. The plant does this by growing a short underground stem. It's almost like growing a root, except this root produces leaves and pitchers, all under the soil. The pitcher will then attract the invertebrate, and the insect will get stuck and slowly digested. The Tunnels Underneath Lakeshore Psychiatric Hospital in Ontario, Canada, there is a network of dark and creepy tunnels. The psychiatric hospital opened in 1889 just outside Toronto with one goal, to help the mentally ill. It was built as a series of Gothic cottages as an alternative to a prison-like asylum. The patients were encouraged to farm, garden, and even help in the construction and maintenance of the property. It was the patients themselves who played a major role in forming the foundations of the hospital. Unfortunately, a rapidly increasing population destroyed this kind of community work. The patients were pushed into forced labor, the place was filled up way too quickly, violence broke out, and by the 1950s things were completely out of hand. The hospital kept on running until 1979, then it was mostly abandoned. People still worked and lived on the grounds, but its days as a mental hospital were finished. The nearby cemetery is all that remains now of those who had called the asylum home. But what's underneath the Lakeshore Psychiatric Hospital? The tunnels run from each individual building to the next, creating a kind of maze underneath the property. These tunnels were said to be used by the facility to move patients without others seeing. There were also rumors that the hospital became so burdened that unwanted patients were taken down into the tunnels to be burned and disposed of. These rumors have never been proven true. The official story is that the tunnels were simply made so that the staff could move more efficiently from one war to the next. Would you be brave enough to explore these tunnels? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Billions of Organisms Scientists have just discovered an ecosystem underneath the surface of the planet. The ecosystem is about twice as large as all the oceans in the world combined. It's a rich universe hiding beneath our feet that no one ever knew about. There is no light, extreme heat, and almost no nutrition. Plus, the subterranean world is at the mercy of intense pressure. But even in the face of all these seemingly impossible impediments to life, the underground biosphere is brimming with it. Scientists have estimated there are roughly 23 billion tons of microorganisms, outweighing the combined weight of every person on the planet. This incredible discovery was made with help from researchers at the Deep Carbon Observatory. They claim the diversity of this mysterious underworld is similar to that of the Amazon or the Galapagos. Yet, unlike those environments, this one is pristine because humans have yet to ruin it. It's the hollow earth theory brought to life, but on a microscopic scale. Karen Lloyd from the University of Tennessee said the discovery has been like finding a new reservoir of life. So what exactly is living underneath our feet? After 10 years of study, including the combined brain power of 1,200 scientists from 52 countries, we have the answer. These great minds say that 70% of the bacteria and archaea on Earth are living beneath the surface. Some organisms live so deep that they haven't seen daylight in millions of years and no longer function using energy from the sun. Some of these creatures have found a way to create their own methane to fuel themselves. It's a whole world of strange microscopic organisms, many of them single-celled, all living up to a mile deep. Underground Alien Base Underneath Archuleta Mesa on the border of Colorado and New Mexico, near the small town of Dulce, there is supposedly a secret underground facility. This facility is allegedly operated by both humans and aliens. It's never been proven, but the rumor has been around since at least 1979. That was when businessman Paul Benevitz realized he was intercepting electronic communications just outside Albuquerque. He believed he was picking up some kind of communication from a secret underground base. It's unclear exactly how he came to this conclusion, but he was so convinced that in 1983, 
His story went national with the popular press. And by 1987, the story was entrenched in the UFO community. Famous UFO conspiracy theorist John Lear even claimed he had independent confirmation of the existence of the base. All these years later, Dulce Base is nothing but a fantasy and a myth. It could be real, but nobody has ever been able to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Still, the rumors persist that the United States government is working here in conjunction with extraterrestrials, mostly kidnapping humans and using them as guinea pigs in genetic experiments. Some believe the aliens are working with our own scientists to try and create a new and improved human species. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Secret World War II Bunker There is a secret underground bunker hiding 73 feet beneath the busy streets of London in England. Black rooms, crumbling passageways, and faded warning signs can be found in this lost place. The mostly abandoned network of tunnels was once crawling with the most important people in the British government. During the days of World War II, the bunker was used as a secret hideout from which top leaders planned everything from the Dunkirk evacuation to the landings at D-Day. Britain's famous Prime Minister Winston Churchill was locked down here in the cold and damp throughout all of November and December of 1940. That was when the German Blitz was at its height. The Nazis were bombing London mercilessly, and so the Prime Minister had to stay safe underground. While this may sound really uncomfortable, it was surprisingly civilized. Staff was already working and living down in the tunnels like bureaucratic rats. They would surface for air only once every 10 to 14 days. The showers may not have been great, but at least there was good food, crystal dining ware, a fully staffed kitchen, two mess halls, and everything else needed to keep the machine working. After the war, the bunker wasn't needed anymore. It was eventually abandoned and these days is only accessible through a booked tour. Dark Matter Underground Scientists are currently working a mile underground in hopes of discovering the undiscoverable. Beneath an old gold mine that's no longer in use, inside a giant titanium tank, scientists are on a mission to find dark matter. These bright minds are convinced that dark matter, a completely invisible material, makes up almost the entire mass of the universe. They say it's all around us, that we wouldn't exist without it, and yet they don't technically know what it is. It's one of the greatest mysteries researchers haven't been able to solve. They are hoping to get a little closer to the truth deep underneath the town of Leed in South Dakota. The idea behind this secret underground lab is that a mile of solid rock, a large tank of pure titanium, and a secondary tank will block the cosmic rays coming from space. Hopefully, if the team can block the cosmic rays and cosmic particles, they'll be able to identify dark matter particles. All they really need is a single dark matter particle to slip inside a vat of liquid xenon, which they have hiding inside the innermost tank, and collide with a xenon nucleus. If this happens, a flash of light will go off, and dark matter will finally be confirmed. This search has been a long time coming. Scientists only recently announced that after five years and $60 million, they have finally gotten to work hunting for dark matter. There was a big delay because of COVID, but now everything is moving at full steam. The only issue is that as of right now, this subterranean base hasn't found anything yet. The Monument Lab One of the most famous landmarks in London is something called The Monument. It's a tribute to the Great Fire of London in September of 1666 that utterly decimated the English capital. The monument is 202 feet tall, a single column with spiral steps running around the inner wall. It looks like any other monument, and it's visited by hundreds of thousands of people a year. But underneath the monument is a secret. The architect, Sir Christopher Wren, wanted to prove once and for all that the Earth orbits the Sun and not the other way around. When the monument was built between 1671 and 1677, the agreed science was still that the Sun revolved around the Earth and that the Earth was at the center of the universe. To pursue his scientific endeavor, Sir Christopher Wren designed the monument to also be a scientific instrument. 
Underneath the base, a central shaft was carved to be used as a zenith telescope. The whole structure was designed to hold an underground laboratory accessible only through a small hatch in the floor, which is currently hidden by the modern ticket booth. At first, it was a big success. The underground lab could be used for gravity and pendulum experiments and for viewing the stars. The issue was that the above-ground traffic caused the whole place to tremble, which very quickly rendered it useless. Underground Research Laboratory The Underground Research Laboratory in Manitoba, Canada was an experimental test site for the storage of nuclear waste below the ground. It was operated by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, built inside a huge granite batholith between 1982 and 83. Scientists stored a large amount of radioactive material inside the research laboratory, then sat back to see what happened. They studied measurements on water exchange, rock movement, and anything else that could theoretically jeopardize the safety of the radioactive materials. The idea was to store all toxic waste deep in the ground so it didn't pollute the environment. Unfortunately, we don't know what else went on at the site or even how the experiments went. We know there were other international users there doing something. And in 2003, the decision was made to shut the lab down. The radioactive waste was supposedly cleaned up and the underground base was closed. Now this site is supposedly home to only one experiment. International scientists are measuring water leakage through a gigantic clay plug. The Black Knight Satellite There is allegedly a spacecraft in near polar orbit around Earth. A ship of extraterrestrial origins that NASA is covering up. It's known as the Black Knight Satellite, and nobody knows what it is exactly. Some have claimed it's nothing but space debris, while others say it's been orbiting our planet for over 12,000 years. During the STS-88 mission in 1998, a photograph was taken that appears to show a large black metallic object hovering in the void of space. According to James Oberg, a space journalist, it was nothing but a thermal blanket lost during the mission. But others say it's proof of the Black Knight satellite. Evidence of this mysterious satellite was supposedly first picked up in 1899 during radio experiments done by Nikola Tesla. Astonishingly, these same signals were picked up by Jorgen Halls in Norway back in 1928. Then, in 1954, researcher Donald Kehoe told local newspapers that the U.S. Air Force had two satellites in orbit around the planet, even though no country had such technology at the time. As you can surely imagine, scientists have denied any alien satellites in our orbit. However, that hasn't stopped the theory from circulating for over 120 years. Mysterious Tracks Dr. Alexander Koltypin, a geologist from the Natural Science Scientific Research Center in Moscow, recently made an extraordinary assertion. Following an investigation in the Phrygian Valley of Turkey, Dr. Koltypin discovered tracks that he claimed were left behind by an intelligent race of creatures. These ancient individuals supposedly lived on our planet roughly 12 to 14 million years ago. According to the doctor, the mysterious site is marked with ruts cutting through deposits made from compacted volcanic ash. The tracks cut all across the landscape of the Phrygian Valley, and they appear to have been there for millions of years. They resemble leftover tire marks of heavy vehicles, like what you might find after tanks have been driving through the mud. And while there were ancient civilizations living in the area, such as the Hittite Empire 3,500 years ago, these tracks were not made by carts or chariots. They appear to be left behind by modern vehicles, but were carved into the ground long before modern humans evolved. There is no logical explanation for what the doctor is proposing. He believes that 12 million years ago, there was another advanced society living on the planet. Maybe they were reptilian, or they could have been humans. Nobody knows for sure. However, if the doctor's claims are correct, they had access to heavy all-terrain vehicles. The tracks left by these machines were preserved just like dinosaur footprints, and scientists have yet to come up with any other realistic explanation 
for what might have created them, the Ten Plagues of Egypt. Every year, Jewish people around the world celebrate Passover in April. The holiday is meant to commemorate when the Jewish people left Egypt, crossed the Red Sea with Moses, and took their place in the Holy Land. It also observes the ten plagues that God unleashed on the ancient Egyptians. According to the biblical tale, the Pharaoh refused to allow Moses to free the enslaved Israelites, and so God sent down a series of plagues to devastate Egypt and put pressure on the Pharaoh. God turned the water to blood, released a plague of frogs, lice, and flies, and made the livestock sick. He gave the Egyptian people boils, unleashed a swarm of locusts, blocked out the sun, and killed all the firstborn children in the city. What scientists have failed to explain is just how accurate the plagues of Egypt really were. One theory argues that a volcanic eruption on the Greek island of Santorini is to blame. Microbiologist Ciro Trevisanato claims the eruption happened in 1600 BC and that the wind carried volcanic ash from Greece all the way to Egypt. Supposedly, mixed in with the volcanic ash was toxic acid. There was also the mineral cinnabar, which could have turned the rivers red, resembling the color of blood. The acidity would have caused frogs to jump out of the water looking for somewhere clean. Acid rain likely fell from the sky and caused people to have boils. The grass would have been contaminated, thereby killing all the animals who ate it. Locusts would have thrived in this environment, looking like a plague from God and the eruption would have caused many days of darkness because of all the ash in the atmosphere. While scientists can't explain everything in the Bible, there does seem to be a perfectly reasonable explanation for the ten biblical plagues. As for the deaths of the firstborn children, Trevi Sanato suggests they may have been sacrificed by their own parents out of desperation to stop the catastrophes. What do you think of this theory? Let me know in the comments below. Talakadu. There is a mysterious place in Karnataka, India that scientists just can't wrap their heads around. It's called Talakadu, and it's a miniature desert in a location that doesn't make sense. At the one edge of the desert is a lush and dense forest, and on the other side is a river. In between the jungle and the river is a long stretch of barren wasteland, like someone transported a chunk of the Sahara Desert here. According to legend, the desert sands were brought to Talakadu because of a curse. In the 16th century, a woman named Ala Milama was scorned by the Mysore kings who once ruled the region. Allegedly, she cursed their lands to be covered in sand. Scientists are always doubtful when it comes to curses, but there is no mistaking the strangeness of the situation here. In Talakadu, there are multiple buildings and ruins from antiquity. There appear to be at least five Shiva temples on the surface and several temples supposedly lost under the sand. Curse or no curse, something happened here roughly 400 years ago that buried the structures in the sand. And sadly, nobody knows what caused it. Doorway on Mars In 2022, NASA's Curiosity rover discovered something unbelievable on the surface of Mars. Something so crazy, there's no way to explain it, but we're gonna try! The rover took a snapshot of what appears to be a doorway on Mars, a rectangular portal leading into the side of a rocky dune, like the entrance of some prehistoric Egyptian tomb. If confirmed, this would have been an extremely impressive discovery, especially since no other proof of intelligent life has ever been documented on the Red Planet. Sadly for the world, NASA immediately denied the existence of a doorway. They released a tweet saying that it looks like a doorway, but it's only a geological feature. NASA tried to convince everyone that it was their own minds making sense of the unknown. The rock formation Mount Sharp is where the picture was taken, a place littered with open fractures leading down into the darkness of the red planet. The doorway, although it looks large in the image, is only about 12 inches high. It would only be big enough for a person, or an alien, less than a foot tall to enter. Nobody knows if NASA is lying about the dimensions of the doorway or if they're telling the truth. Either way, some people argue it's obvious in the image that it's been crafted by tools into a perfectly rectangular doorframe. It's way too impeccable, straight-edged, and well-aligned to be a natural formation. At least, it sure looks that way. Wormholes Wormholes are a phenomenon that scientists can't explain, 
mostly because they are entirely theoretical. We see them used all the time in science fiction, but according to Stephen Hsu from the University of Oregon, we have never found one in real life and are most likely never going to find one, at least not anytime soon. In theory, a wormhole is an interstellar highway that burrows through both space and time. They are tunnels through the fourth dimension that connect two points that are very far away from each other. Most theoretical physicists agree that if we were to use a wormhole, its entrance would be inside of a black hole. Either that, or we would need to produce an immense amount of energy to bring up the passage through space-time, something that's currently impossible. This leads us to another unanswered question. If scientists say wormholes are currently impossible, how can we explain the stargates and portals found all over the globe? Potential stargates have been identified at the site of Hayumarca in Peru, at Abu Ghurab in Egypt, and even at the 9,000-year-old stone circle in Lake Michigan. If there really were portals being used, they would have only existed because of wormholes. To this day, scientists can't explain the stargates or the theoretical wormholes that are allegedly lurking out in the universe. However, if there really were functional portals on the planet thousands of years ago, they must have been used by a race of highly advanced beings who figured out how to use the mysterious interstellar highways. Virabhadra Temple The Virabhadra Temple is a place of great mystery and intrigue, with one fascinating feature that scientists can't figure out. In order to understand this, we need to start from the beginning. Lepakshi is a small village in Andhra Pradesh, India, and it was once part of the Vijayanagara Empire. The temple was created by a pair of ambitious brothers, likely between 1530 and 1545, during the reign of King Achyuta Deva Raya. The building was an absolute masterpiece, complete with idols of Shiva, Vishnu, Nandi, and other Hindu deities. These sculptures are truly something else, and just about every surface is painted in brilliant colors and epic scenes from ancient mythologies. There is even a huge fresco of the 14 avatars of Shiva, with the deity himself wearing a garland of skulls. However, the true mystery of the temple is located in the dance hall. This place is supported by 69 pillars. It should be 70, but one of them isn't touching the ground. There is a gap between the floor of the temple and the base of the pillar that's so obvious that you can pass objects underneath it. The pillar has supposedly been hanging suspended from the ceiling of the hall for 500 years. Scientists don't understand how gravity isn't bringing the solid granite pillar down, and they just can't make sense of it. The Patam Crater There is a mystery hiding deep in the forests of Siberia, located in the remote area north of Irkutsk, far from curious eyes and tourist cameras. It's a towering structure of rock that looms over the otherwise bright green landscape of trees. It almost looks like a volcano, but with a strange ball-shaped formation inside of the crater. Until 1949, only a handful of locals knew about this structure. For centuries, it was considered a bad place, somewhere of great evil that even animals avoided. It wasn't until Russian geologist Vadim Kolpakov started investigating the formation that the rest of the world found out about it. According to the geologist, it reminded him of a giant pit mine at first. Then, when he examined the crater closely, he found it to be made of shattered limestone blocks. It made no sense and clearly wasn't a mine. It was like something or someone had shattered a limestone formation to create a pit of broken shards. The phenomenon was named the Patam Crater, and we still don't know what it is. Some claim an alien ship crashed here and broke the limestone into thousands of fragments. Others say the site is an impact crater formed from a meteorite. However, the only thing scientists were ever able to learn is that the crater most likely formed roughly 500 years ago, perhaps from a steam explosion caused by underground magma emplacement. The Head of St. John the Baptist In all four canonical Gospels of the New Testament, we hear about John the Baptist. He was killed at the behest of King Herod of Judea prior to the crucifixion of Jesus in the first century AD. The Gospels claim that St. John was decapitated and his head was served on a platter.
This story is not only found in the Bible, it is also in historical chronicles of the history of the Jewish people. The historian Flavius Josephus described the events of John's death almost exactly as they are depicted in Holy Scripture. Most modern-day historians agree he was almost certainly a real person, and he most likely had his head removed from his body. What scientists can't figure out is where his head went after his death. The head of John the Baptist is one of the most coveted artifacts in the world, something that can't even be confirmed as real. In the Bible, there is no mention of where John the Baptist went after he was killed. It only explains that the disciples came and took away his body. In the 4th century, rumors spread that John was buried in Palestine, but nobody has ever found his burial place or his skull. This is despite at least four locations claiming they currently have his head, including the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus and the Church of San Silvestro in Capite, Rome. Where do you think his head could be? Let me know in the comments below. The woman and the iPhone. There is a painting from the 18th century that apparently depicts a woman engrossed in something happening on her smartphone. The painting is called The Expected One, and it was created in the year 1860. The artwork shows a woman moving down a rough dirt path through the trees. There is what appears to be a gentleman caller sitting on the rocks with a flower in hand, waiting for the girl to reach him. However, the woman doesn't see him, as her eyes are clearly fixed on the object in her hands. It looks like she is texting and completely oblivious to the world around her, fully captivated by her phone. However, there were no mobile or cellular devices in the 1800s. Ferdinand George Waldmuller, the artist behind the painting, had never seen a phone in his life. Unless he had been given a vision of the future, there is no way he would have painted a smartphone. And although conspiracy theorists are convinced the painting is proof of time travel, experts say otherwise. Most likely, the painting shows a girl walking down a trail holding a prayer book. Thanks for watching! Which of these strange mysteries do you find the most fascinating? Let us all know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!